It's Christmas party time. If you're organising one, ask yourself this question. Would you choose a venue which didn't have a toilet you could use, any menus you could read? And, oh, yeah, when you get there, not all of you will get in. Doesn't sound great, does it? But that's exactly what is happening. Tonight, we're asking, after 20 years of disability discrimination law, just how much has actually changed. Nikki Fox has been finding out. Our investigation began with 50 visits to a mixture of chain and independent restaurants across the country in Bristol, Cardiff, York, Birmingham and Manchester. We assessed them on wheelchair access and whether they had accessible toilets. We also asked if they had a large print menu for those with a visual impairment and a hearing loop. This helps reduce unwanted background noise and helps hearing aid users hear someone much more clearly. Our first stop was Manchester and both myself and a member of the watchdog team were rigged with secret cameras. Our cover story was simple. We were organising a Christmas party for people with a range of disabilities. So we're on our way. We're going to make 10 visits today, uh, 10 different venues. We're going to see what they're like for access, but not just for people in wheelchairs or scooters like me, for people with visual impairments and hearing impairments. As soon as we started our undercover visits, it became immediately apparent that wheelchair access was poor. I couldn't get into two restaurants because they didn't have a ramp. And when they did have one, the staff weren't exactly prepared. <laughs> Good for me, it's the first time I've used it. So I oh, well, there you go. <laughs> the staff at this big chain took several attempts to fit their ramp. Installed correctly, the two sections should be locked together. But just before I go over it, one staff member moves it and they separate. Building a ramp. <laughs> and the disappointments kept coming. Despite having a state-of-the-art chairlift, the staff here couldn't get it working. I don't think this is going to come down today. And it went from bad to worse when we assessed facilities for people with other disabilities. Just one restaurant was able to provide a large print menu. There was a glimmer of hope with hearing loops. One restaurant out of ten claimed to have one, but when they investigated further, they couldn't actually find it. I'm not sure if actually got one at this restaurant. Right, OK. I showed my findings to Chris Fry, a lawyer who specialises in disability rights. He's won a number of cases against restaurants. Whether it's a lift that's out of order or whether staff can't, uh, haven't been trained how to use it, doesn't... You know, it's all part of the picture. It's a failure to make a reasonable adjustment. So there would be a breach of the Equality Act, um, be little defence to it just to say, well, we've got one. And the customer with a disability would have a case? Yes. Mm. Now, we're quite flexible about where we throw our watchdog Christmas party, so we travelled further afield to see if our options for accessible venues were any better. Helping us go undercover were Tom, a wheelchair user, and Mohammed and his guide dog, Solo. Disabled toilets were totally unusable in some restaurants. This one in Bristol doubled up as a storeroom, the clutter covering the floor. However, it was the disabled toilets at this large chain in Cardiff that really shocked our undercover team carrying out the visit. It doubles up as something else. As what? As my office. Oh, it, it is really, an office? It really is my office. That's how limited the space we are. Oh, God. Hello. Hello. Sorry. Hello. <laughs> it literally is your office. <laughs> oh, no, you thought I was joking. This is literally... <laughs> Yes, you heard that correctly. This disabled toilet also acted as the restaurant's back office. If you were there and couldn't use the facilities, then you could require them, you could get a, a positive injunction to make it accessible. Right. Um, and the restaurant would have to pay compensation for the embarrassment that the person would have um, had to be through in aborting a night. So looking at the results of our research, what was the overall picture? Well, across the 50 undercover visits we carried out, a third didn't have accessible toilets. And even when they did, some were totally unusable. And a dire 88% of restaurants didn't offer large print menus for people with visual impairments, so restaurants aren't even bothering with the more simple measures. But the worst facilities were for the hard of hearing. Just two restaurants out of 50 had a hearing loop in place. So, there were pretty poor results all round for the restaurants we tested. But would pubs and bars fare any better in catering for our Christmas do? Time to hit the phones. We called 50 bars across the UK in Edinburgh, Southampton, Liverpool, Exeter and Belfast. 
We asked them whether they had accessible toilets and hearing loops. So how did they get on? Well, just like the restaurants, a third didn't have accessible toilets and just one had a hearing loop. So what's the everyday reality like? Jade, you're a wheelchair user. A couple of people that we spoke to um, offered to carry someone in a wheelchair up or downstairs. Has that happened to you before? I'd say it's normal for me now. I wouldn't say that I particularly enjoy it because obviously everyone can see you be carried up and it's not just you, they have to bring the wheelchair up as well and then you're trapped upstairs then and you have to then find someone to help you come back downstairs. Um, Charlie, you could do with a few hearing loops, is that right? Um, hearing loops have been around for, for years but the problem has always been that um, often the technology is broken. I think often deaf people are the last thing on the list because um, deafness is invisible. So it's very easy for deaf people to, to feel like they're forgotten. Yeah, I think the important thing is like, at the end of the day, you as a blind person want, or a visually impaired person, you want to just have the freedom for choice. At the end of the day, legislation can do as much as it likes, but until you change people's attitudes, nothing's going to change. So across the 100 bars and restaurants we tested, it was clear that wheelchair access needed improvement and provisions for people with hearing and visual impairments were almost non-existent. Just like everybody else, disabled people want to party, to be able to get through the front door and have a drink with their mates, to hear what everyone else is saying and to be able to pick their own food off a menu. So bar and restaurant owners, do your bit. After all, this is the season of goodwill to all men and women. <laughs> Merry Christmas. Merry Christmas. Certainly is. Thanks, Nikki. Now, I'm now joined by Justin Tomlinson, the Minister for Disabled People. Thanks for coming in. Uh, well, you've seen the film. Uh, it does seem shocking mm. that some people can't even get into restaurants and bars. There are no disabled toilets. I mean, do you find it embarrassing? I, I'm really disappointed to see that. I mean, I think what surprised me most about that video was that it was big chains. Yeah. Now, I would have thought, as a given, they would have been able to deal with training, making sure their facilities are accessible, not just because of the Equality Act, but because the combined spending power of people with disabilities is £212 billion in this country. They're often the first to complain when business is tough. They are missing out, and it's so frustrating to see. Often it was just a lack of training, and it's something that should be avoided. OK, look. Um, you go to that restaurant, uh, mm -hmm. your office or, or the, the council go, and they see a disabled toilet full of, uh, I don't know, toilet rolls, a kit. You see an office there. Um, yep. You're obviously not happy. Um, the council come in and say, don't do it. You empower them, you educate them, and they still continue. They give you lip service, but they don't change anything. What powers do you have to fine them, to close them down? Well, through the Equality Act, there are the legal powers to fine them, as you say, to make them act. But we shouldn't be having to do that. There should be an absolute given, that £212 billion, and, and I say this, I was a former nightclub manager, it was my first ever graduate job, fully accessible nightclub, we commercially benefited from that, and it's so frustrating because, I mean, to see a, a disabled toilet being used as an office is, is unbelievable. But you, I mean, mm. it's complacency, it looks like complacency, uh, you're in charge of this, they're almost sort of saying, yeah, yeah, thanks very much for the education, thanks, yes, yeah, so we'll do it, and they don't do anything. In this age, 21st yeah. century, mm. and people are being carried to and from yeah, toilets. Yeah. It's just, it's completely unacceptable and that's why... So why they, can't well, you do something so, about so, it? So this was flagged up to me before, so I, I've met with the British Hospitality Association who to their credit recognised that their members are missing out on this, this combined spending power and they've agreed to do a joint guidebook with us, guideline working with stakeholders... Guidelines, but it's going to be action, you've got to it, punish it, them. Yeah, absolutely, in conjunction, by the law, the legal law means that they should be getting uh, a lot of what we've seen in that video right and that needs to be addressed. I want to know which of those chains that are letting them down so I can directly contact those chief executives and take that up. I understand for your video you've sort of kept it sort of uh, broad brush, but I want to know and chase those. And then for those smaller, more independent organisations where perhaps we would have been less surprised, we're still disappointed, that's why working with people like the British uh, Hospitality Association, we're going to spread best practice, improve that guidance. I'm with you on this 100%. They're the first to complain if they struggle as a business. Of course they're going to struggle if they are, are losing a huge amount of business. Because we're talking about an act that's been here for 20 years, right? Uh, 20 years and people still can't get a toilet. 20 years we can't print a big menu. 
Why can we not have this as law that every single restaurant, you've talk, talked about massive yep. chains there, yep. don't have an accessible toilet? Yep. They've got to have it, yes. otherwise they can't open. Yes. Why can't you enforce that? Well, we are, and we, we see lots of legal action that is taken, but it's that frustration that we shouldn't be having to do this. This is in their interest. As a business, they are marking themselves out from huge amounts of Christmas parties, of parties all year round, by if you make your venue not accessible, you're blocking people from coming in there, it's unacceptable, it's bad for business and it's un unfair on the people who are going to be missing out. Uh, as I said, I'm shocked to see so many of the big chains doing that. I want to personally go and chase those ones up. It shouldn't be happening as a given. Um <laughs>